so this is our practical that we do in our lab optics lab and basically what we do is we try to determine the wavelength of sodium light number one number two the separation between the two doublet lines right 5890 angstrom 5896 angstrom so two points number one determination of average wavelength and number two separation between the doublet and what we will be using we will be using the fabry perot interferometer and this is the setup you see so this is one of the interferometers fabry perot interferometer and in the heart of this interferometer is this setup as you can see over here see the two mirrors you can see the part of the mirror and the wedge shape is in between in this here the mirrors are not entirely plain the shape is wedge so it is over here but this is the heart of the setup the two mirrors and here you can see how a student trying to observe the fringe pattern so we observe this using our eye and here is the sodium vapor lamp and then the lens and then the interferometer and then we observe this so this is the setup and here this is how when in the initial beginning we don't see any pattern so you see this is what we will now talk about so i have just shown you the fringe pattern and this is the result of this system this interference the heart of this interference is this setup two plane parallel mirrors so basically you see the fabry perot interferometer it consists of two flat parallel but remember semi transparent mirrors and they are separated by a certain distance now this arrangement where the distance is fixed if the fixed distance then we know we call this as fabry perot etalon and if the distance vary in the lab the setup we have that the distance can vary so it is known as fabry perot interferometer okay now what happens you see the input light from a broad source enters from here and it goes through multiple reflections in between and it emerges from the etalon here and during each bounce causing a modulation in the transmitted and the reflected beams here you are just seeing the reflected beam and we will see this using our eye but remember in this case also here also we also have a transmitted beam and if we use a setup here then we can also observe this so this is the transmitted beam and this is the reflected beam in the experiment we are observing this but it is also possible to observe this as well although remember that the intensity of this okay, this one will be much lesser so the fringe pattern that we will see here which is this fringe pattern is much more uh, what will i say the contrast is much better compared to this transmitted one now in the actual experiment this is an ideal case in the actual experiment what will happen is that there will be an angle the mirror will not be a plane but there will be a wedge shape like this why the shape will be wedge like this the reason is that otherwise the reflection from these cases they will interfere okay so to avoid this we will do a slight angle to this the back end and the wedge shape will be used this is experimentally used you see these two faces this one and this one they are not parallel otherwise the reflection will interfere with each other and we will observe much more things complicated 
So to avoid the reflection from this surface, remember we want the reflection from the inner surface, not the outer one. But the, if the two surfaces are parallel, then the outer one reflection could also cause a pattern and which will interfere from our to our with our observation so to get rid of this we are making a slight an angle so that the the reflection from the outer pattern this outer edge of this glass this doesn't interfere with our observation and so the wedge shaped so wedge shaped is used used fabry perot configuration and here the input light basically bounces between as i was saying previously you see between two closely spaced partially reflecting surfaces you see here the shape is wedged so that the reflection from the outer surfaces they don't interfere and the inner surfaces are reflecting and this creates a large number of reflections here and you see interference of these multiple uh, beams they produce the sharp spikes and this here basically one of the you remember the fringe pattern that I previously showed you this is a result of this pattern so sharp spikes in the transmission for the certain light frequencies now because of this large number of interfering rays this has very high energy not energy this has very high resolution and it is much better than the Michelson interferometer and for this reason they are sometimes they are basically used in telecommunications as well okay now so here I am also showing you another picture so this is our broad source lens and so the multiple reflection now in the experiment we don't use this so basically we observe this using our naked eye okay fine so any questions till now good point in the lab you see we have the same setup this one is the same this one is also there this broad source sodium vapor lamp is there but in our lab setup these two components are not there so we will just observe using the eye and so this thing is formed inside our eye you can say okay and remember in the aim of this experiment is not to measure the distance between the two mirrors sometimes student might get confused so in this experiment we do not do that but what we will do is we put uh, the mirrors at certain distances and then using the observations we try to find the wavelength number one average wavelength of the sodium light and number two the separation between them this is the aim of our experiment okay fine okay now you see so as i was telling you the highly reflective surfaces this one inside this divide the wave into multiple parts you see see this light some of the light may pass through but some of the light what happens is there is a sort of reflection now you see each contribution which it reflects an even number of times in the interferometer before existing exiting you see here even number of times reflections two times here one time right now what happens when these different contributions emerge from the interferometer now this depends on the relationship between the size of the cavity and the wavelength of the light I, I will just show you sometime from now the actual relationship say for instance the if the light of wavelength lambda is normally incident on the fabry pair interferometer of distance d then you remember the previous case we found the expression for the maximum 
irradiance, minimum irradiance. So similarly, we can get sir, uh, those sort of conditions as well. Okay. Now, so here I've just shown you an example of constructive interference. You see, this is directly transmitted and this is after twice reflected sort of this. Okay. So when the cavity is of length 5 lambda by 2, you see the neighboring contributions, they all add up and they emerge from the interferometer. But when the cavity is of length 7 lambda by 2, you see here, this is like this, this is like this. So what happens is that the neighboring contributions will cancel. And the overall effect is that the interferometer has a very weak light output. Okay, I'm just showing you a, to an example. Fine, so this is our fringe pattern that we observe in the experiment. Okay, so these are also very fine fringe pattern. This is from our lab, this one. But this one is from a different setup. Now you can see the very closely lying space, the sodium doublet. But in our lab, we do not observe this. This also depends on the mirror properties. In our lab, the mirror is such that we don't observe the very finely closed spaces. Okay. And this is yet again fabry perot interferometer fringe observed from some other setup. I have just shown you that you, you can also get such finely observed uh, fringe patterns. Okay. Now, before um, I... Uh, have Bolo? Sir, you have a dark line or bright line. You have a police car. 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 More or less. If you use a laser source and all that stuff, then you can get something like this. Also, as I was saying you, uh, it depends on the mirror properties as well. There is something called finesse. If you look into the mathematics of the fabry perot interferometer, you will understand the sharpness of the fringe. Here the fringe is very sharp, but here it is not so sharp. Again, here the fringes are quite sharp, but here it is not so sharp. But again, for our purposes, this is good enough. At least we can identify the fringes and you will see that in the experiment we are able to get quite reasonable account of the difference between the two doublets so even this overall not so sharp fringe can give us very good ex results I will, I will show you just now okay so sodium doublet origins just for you to remember so 3p half 3p3 halves. Remember, very important. Why do we get sodium doublet? The reason is spin orbit interaction. Had there been though no spin orbit interaction, then we will not observe the doublet. Sometimes we also ask this in the experiment as well. Remember these facts. I mean, on a mother bulchi. You must remember this. Okay. So this is our setup, the lab setup. Okay, so as I was saying, okay, so this is our experimental setup of our lamp. Now, I am going to show you a short video. Okay, now just observe. So you see, this is the setup and when you, and this is the fringe that we get from this setup. Okay, so this is observing from the naked eye. So here you see this is the sodium vapor lamp and this is the lens system. Okay. Sodium vapor lamp lens. Okay. Next. So this is the heart of the fabry perot interferometer. The mirror system. Okay. Next. So these are the these are just linear scale, side scale, I will show you. Okay, so adjustment screws also. You have to take readings from this. 
okay these are the vertical and uh, just a second yes this one this is the horizontal and vertical screw i will just show you what is the importance of these screws okay now so this is the pin system so what we will be doing first we have to align this optical instrument and this system is very important so we will observe the image of this pin and then we will try to this will help us so that we we are able to make the two mirrors parallel remember we will get multiple beam interferometry only when the beam the two mirrors are parallel okay and so for that we need some guide so this pin system will guide us i will just show you after this how it is done okay so next now So this is the overall setup. Fine. If you come and visit our lab, you will be seeing this thing. Okay. Now you see these are the screws. These are required. Now you have to use these screws so that to make the two mirror systems parallel. Okay. Now this part I will just not talk right now. So here on your screen. you can see so this is the linear scale shown on the side and this is the drum scale i just shown you sir dekha jacche na acha 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 ek second ha sir see so this is the drum scale this is the linear scale on the side so this is the linear scale as it looks like and this is the horizontal adjustment screw i just told you and this is the vertical adjustment screw and this is the slow motion screw scale okay and just i just showed you in this video how it looks like so this is the pin system as you can see okay so now what do we do the basic idea so first we have to align the setup that means what do you mean the first step is to make the mirrors parallel now here we have the sodium vapor lamp here we have the pin system as you can see there are light coming out from all these directions now we are observing here right and so we are observing this point basically this point over here and you can see the mirror tilt adjustment screws 1 2 3 4 now at first when the two mirrors are not parallel to each other then we will observe multiple images like this it is even possible to observe four or five images so what we do when we see this we slowly tilt these screws this 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 what we do sometimes is we fix one set and try to play with the other set and as a result after some time we will observe something like this here so you see what happens is that all images they are superposing on each other and the moment from this stage to this stage when we go then at that moment you will immediately see this so here this is the schematic set setup this is the real setup and the moment all these images they merge on a single point you will start seeing the fringe system remember the locus of constant phase so this is the locus for bright fringe this is the locus for dark fringe and so on and so forth so total fringe system right good next one now so first we have the screws on the mirrors so we have this 1 2 3 4 so we use these screws to may superimpose the pins and as a result when we when the as a result of this alignment when the pins all the images they superimpose on each other then this means that the mirror mirrors are parallel to each other and then we will see the fringe system but this is not the end of the story why the reason is that sometimes you will see that the fringe the center is very far from your pin system from the region of interest what we want is to bring this over here right 
So we want to bring this close to the center. This has got nothing to do with the pin system, but just close so that we can observe the measurement. We can change the screw and then we can observe the overall effect. And for this, we will use this horizontal and this vertical screw. And so by changing them, it is possible to bring this fringe system near the very center. Okay. Now you see, you remember, we have the sodium doublet, right? So basically, we there are two sets of rings, one for each of the yellow emission lines of the sodium lamp. They have slightly different wavelengths, six angstrom difference. Now, one of the two sets is shown dotted here so that we can easily understand them, right? Now, what happens is in the experiment, we will slowly move the mirrors up away from each other. So now till now, we have not played with, with the distance, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I am slowly going to change the distance between the mirrors. And as a result, the entire fringes will change, right? Both the ring patterns, they move outward and the center alternatively appears bright and dark, right? Now the two ring sets, they move apart at slightly different rates. And as a result, you see the separation changes. Eventually, what you will see is that one ring set will catch up with the other one and they will overlap completely. And then what will happen? We will see complete bright and complete dark. Okay. So in between, we will have something like this. And then we will have this overall ring set when there is a complete overlap. Okay. And finally, again, the faster ring set will surpass the slower ring set. And eventually, they will be interleaved again. So this is the overall thing. Now you must be wondering that, sir, this figure looks very nice. But do we really observe this? Let me show you. Okay. So back to our video. Now you see what I'm doing right now is slowly changing the screw, slowly changing the mirrors distance. You see what, what is happening? The fringe pattern slowly is changing, right? As a result, the fringe pattern. So this is the first part of the experiment. And in the next part that I have just shown you, you see, you change the distance very fast and you see what will happen. At time, there is complete overlap. Then there is uniform illumination. Just as Bolo, here you see, you see uniform illumination. Uniform illumination means this set over here, this one, this set, alternate dark bright, dark bright, dark bright. So there is uniform illumination. And this is the case where one set, ent one set entirely catches with the other one. And which is this set? This set is this one, you see, overall. Yes, this one, overall dark bright, and then again uniform illumination. So this is what we observe when we change the distance very fast. Okay, fine. So I have shown you experimentally that these figures are not just for playing or just for drawing. It is really possible to observe this. Okay. Very fast, uniform illumination. Uniform illumination corresponds to this case. And then dark bright set, you will see when the two sets overlap. Two bright sets overlap, two dark sets overlap. You will see the complete dark bright set. And this is the case for uniform illumination. Achha. Sir, I picture Hmm. distance I'm changing it very fast. Now uniform illumination. Then again dark bright set is appearing. Then again you will see uniform illumination. Sir, I'm not sure the document. 
ও আচ্ছা আচ্ছা ভিডিওটা দেখতে পারোনি না 